On a night that nearly boiled over, the Rangers kept it under control on the ice and on the scoreboard. 3-1 the final in the Battle of the Hudson against the New Jersey Devils. Hi, everyone. Welcome inside our Delta MSG studios from the Garden. Alongside Steve Valiquet, I'm John Giannone. Couple things that the Rangers will take away from tonight. Certainly the two points, the most important thing. But the fact that Mika Zibanejad scored 5-on-5 five five yeah. and broke that long drought, which dates back to December 23rd, might be the most important development. I, yeah, I agree with you. That's one of two big ones. Mika's night, it helps him. And if it helps him, it helps the team. It's all about winning, and it's all about being able to score at five on five. With the Rangers being able to get three goals at five on five tonight, I thought it started early for Mika. He had a buzz. He was going down the middle of the ice. It's important that he's taking that outside shot, but using that to pull him inside, just like this. Get inside, get a shot from the slot area. It didn't hit the net on that one, but he had one much later on in the game that just stepping in the middle helped him. And the forecheck helps him here where he's able to collect because he has the timing to follow up the play. That's good news for the Rangers. Mika has to be there going into this game, John. He only had five high danger scoring chances since December 23rd. So being able to get after it that way helps. Jones, much like we saw Fox do against St. Louis, was looking to airmail this one because you have the speed line on the ice. We're gonna see this a lot. Roslovic checks and then he knows he's gotta get in there and apply pressure. Now, it's not always about putting the guy through the end boards. It's the pressure so they make a mistake so you can flush. And when you see Kreider and Zibanejad scissor right here, make no mistake, that's the connected triangle we talked about in the pregame. These three guys have speed, they can get in quickly. And when the goalie gets down here, Mika has the recognition to finish it on a backhand. So all of these things add up to a great night at five on five when line number one's going like that. I think the other plus for the Rangers, look, make no mistake, those guys in the locker room, they sit down after this one and say, hey, boys, we just ended their season. Yeah. They ended ours last year. That's payback. Mm -hmm. It wasn't payback just taking a regular season game from them. What was it, February 22nd? Those are just little, little bites. That's a big one. And you know what? I thought that the Devils, they looked beaten in this game, and I think the Rangers recognized that. There was blood in the water, and they went after them. And make no mistake, that's a good sign. That's a team that had a killer instinct. I've talked about that this year. I like to see when you can recognize the moments of the game that are important, where the other team doesn't have that pushback. The Devils had a little bit late, late in the game, mm -hmm. but for the most part, they didn't have that pushback, and the Rangers took advantage of them. They were going to talk more about that. The, the most important part of the night in the standings, Rangers get two more points. Now they stay four ahead of Carolina before the big showdown in Raleigh tomorrow night. Rangers had 26 shots on goal in this game. Mika Zibanejad had seven of them. That was a great look at the goal via our film room powered by CDW. Here is Mika Zibanejad in the dressing room with Dave Maloney after the win. Well, Mika, back-to-back uh, -back games is a pretty solid team effort, it looked like. Yeah, uh, I thought we uh, uh, played a almost near to a complete game again. Uh, yeah, and yeah, I, I think we, we, uh, we wanted to build off that uh, St. Louis game, and I thought we did, and, and um, that's a good sign. Now, how good did it feel to score? Uh, I mean, obviously, it's sorry. Um, <laughs> Um, always nice to be able to contribute, um, uh, and um, yeah, it was a, obviously a good feeling, and, and uh, knowing that it helped the team to win, that's uh, that's even better. Yeah, it was a, it was a big goal though. It was the first one of a pretty tight game. Yeah, um, I thought we had a lot ch a lot of chances that we could have scored on early, um, and and uh, I mean we we uh, thought we did a really good job again getting pucks to net um, attacking and, and uh, you know finally uh, finally we got one and, and uh, got a second one from Gus so it was, uh, it was good. Just given what the rest of this week looks like what was the mindset going into today and trying to start off on the right foot? Um, I mean we, we know it's a it's a busy uh, busy week but we uh, obviously a big game here against the uh, divisional rival and, and, and uh, um, Want to get the two points? We know there's another big game coming coming up tomorrow against Carolina. That's a good team. So um, the team that we're we uh, we're battling with for that spot. So um, it's going to be a tough game and and, uh, and and a good challenge. Mika, 
the score was close, but I mean, it felt like you guys were generating a lot. It felt like you, you were in control for much of the game. I mean, it's the last two games, it feels like, especially with some of the new additions, does it feel like you guys are rolling all four lines and, and doing a lot of things you want to do? Yeah, I think we, uh, um, I think we're doing a better job with the puck um, and, and just some of the decision making that we're we're doing out there. I think we're um, we're not allowing um, a whole lot of. Uh, first of all, I don't think we're allowing a whole lot of great A chances, but I don't think we're allowing a lot of shots either. Uh, trying to keep them on the outside, try to close it a little bit quicker. But I think, um, especially against a team like this, they're I mean they're got incredible talent and, and, and speed. So um, you don't you don't want to you know f- feed into their game and transition and, and uh, uh, giving that time to to their skilled guys. And, and uh, I thought we did a good job not doing that today. Insights there from Mika Zabanajad, who it should be noted, scored the goal midway through the game. It was no score until he put the Rangers on the board. And then with less than a minute to go in the second period, it was Eric Gustafson mm-hmm. with a lot of help from the biggest Ranger in front, made it 2 nothing, and it ended up being the game winner. You know, we were talking earlier about the fight between the Rangers and the Devils. It always starts at the faceoff, and the Rangers dominated in the faceoff dot tonight. Dominated. And when you look at the numbers, uh, it all also is the when and this was a big one VZ jumps in and that's the battle the second effort that you need to get it back to the point I like the recognition here from Gustafson they rushed they blitzed him so he gets it down low why because the big man's down there and he's got support from VZ who's a great skater flush it back to the point this is where the Rangers had five of their last six power play goals and they're starting to use this at even strength which is a great sign so now you got the big man in front and they got layered screen everybody's piled this is a good look for the Rangers they know that with one player in the high ice and one deeper you can be first to get the puck but you also get the benefit of that screen off the goal and as I talked about in the second intermission I can't tell you how uncomfortable it is when the big guy's in front of you and you can't see over his shoulder, even if you're jumping up and you go to the hip, you're, you're really losing your balance and you're weighted too far on one side just to see it as it comes across the screen and pick it back up. It's a nightmare job. Serious question. Who was big enough to do that to you? Because you're almost mad. Brian Boyle in practice. Okay, there you That's go. it. Yeah. They're, all, they're, they're really. And the funny thing about screens, and this is one thing we've never talked about, you don't practice them in practice because nobody's willing to screen you in practice. You only see them in games. Right. Can you imagine what it's like to see that? And I'm telling you, it's the hardest thing about playing games for the first time in the NHL. It's you train your whole life to see the puck. You get to the NHL and nobody lets and you, you see it. See it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah. All right, that made it two nothing. Sixth goal of the year for Gustafson. Now Matt Rempe didn't get an assist on that play, but he certainly assisted on the Rangers, making it two nothing. 22 seconds after that, though, he took a penalty, and it was a moment in the game that could have been massively combustible. Yeah. Fortunately, it wasn't. The reason why it's not is because this guy has so many deposits in the bank and trust with the New York Ranger players, they're not going to let him take a five minute and then hurt him, especially after this. He's in front of the net for the goal and his elbow comes up. He's going to be, he's going to hear it about this one. But when he leaves the game and takes a five, do you think the boys are going to let him down? No chance. I'm not a gambling guy, but I would have put money on it. I would have bet all of five John's houses on it. The one. <laughs> All five of them. Oh, you gave All away five the story, of them. Exactly. Yeah. No, I'm serious. Guys are going to always buckle down for somebody that's all in as a teammate. Rempe's all in. The players were all in for him. I love seeing that stuff. That's that's when you know you got you got the ultimate iron fist there. I have one fewer than you. <laughs> yeah, right. Fact. 